So I wanted to take a minute and do a walk around of this car. The specifics are someone came over to his lane entering Canada Corner at Road America. The speed discrepancy was pretty high. <clears throat> I want to say at least 40 or 50 mile an hour. And our impact with the wall occurred between 140 and 125 mile an hour. Um, driver is okay. It's my dad, Lou. Uh, he suffered two or three, I think three fractured non-displaced ribs and sprained both ankles. Lots of um, cuts and bruises, uh, but overall in good spirits. Uh, he's been in the hospital since yesterday. Today's Tuesday. And, uh, yesterday, Monday, uh, the 30th of September, 2024. Anyway, I want to walk around the car and take some notes. Uh, this chassis is originally a C5 frame that I built when I was still at LG Motorsports in 2009. This was a sister car, sister frame that was never assembled for Eric Lux and Kelly Collins when we were at the Rolex Series in 2010. The Rolex car was converted to World Challenge in 2013 and Tommy Treacy drove that car for part of the season until we uh, had a mishap with a concrete barrier at Long Beach and that Rolex car was then written off. I loaded that car with a forklift too and uh, it sat on the surface plate <clears throat> and 80% of the parts on that car were transferred to this car about uh, six, seven years later. Anyway, it's uh, original 3132 chassis roll cage. I welded it. Welded. Um, I definitely have some learning to do. I, I am taking this opportunity to. It's not often that you get a car like this in this shape and the driver survives. And so I'll walk around and just comment and we can do it this as we please. Uh, yep, 4130, inch and three quarter, 095, TIG welded. I welded it. We definitely have a heat affected zone here. I'm going to take this as a learning opportunity too. I don't think we would experience this with Docal or DOM even. Uh, but because this was a pro car, we wanted ultimate stiffness. So we went with 4130. Um, it is TIG welded. Just want the audience to know it's TIG welded. And uh, yeah, so Diagonal on the main hoof is pretty bowed. Um, one thing about this car is this was a club car. And please don't take that personally, but it, it wasn't a professional effort. It wasn't a pro effort. The people that worked on it were volunteers towards the end of this program. Brandon and Oscar were paid to work on this car, but the initial assembly was done not by them. Um, and so, as race cars go, things get zip tied, velcroed in place. And while they function on track, they become projectiles in an accident. And I just want to reinforce the fact that velcroing down certain items is okay, but let's remember that they become three, four, five times their weight, 10 times their weight in an impact. This car did have Ford bars. It does have a C5 fuel tank in it and that survived.
there was a fire here. I don't know what started it. This is the fuel line, but the fuel line uh, I can't, doesn't appear to be broken. It appears to be intact. Maybe it loosened. There is also a lot of oil lines here. That's probably the likely cause. Uh, obviously the, oh, the dry sump. <laughs> All of the dry sump lines enter the cockpit here. And that's probably what happened. Because I mean, this car was 140 mile an hour wide open throttle, so everything was just glowing. Uh, that's likely the cause of the fire. The fuel line appears to be intact. I'll be sending as many parts to manufacturers as I can so that way they can learn and make their stuff better. This is uh, AMT drop spindle. Did a pretty good job. <laughs> it's wild. It's the cradle. Again, I'm walking the file for the first time. Oh man, oh, it's, it's still good. I think this goes here. Yeah, that goes there. Mark, is there a warranty on that? Sprained, damaged, cut both of his ankles, and you can see the dead pedal's broken. <laughs> right, no big deal. Oh, she's been right over. Yeah, that thing's not moving. Um, and so if I had to guess, you know, the since this car was old, uh, Grand Am, it had mechanical throttle, and then it got converted to Motec. And so we went back to electronic throttle. And when this conversion was done, you know, it works. Uh, it just, you don't think you're gonna hit a wall at 140 mile an hour. And this thing is gonna bust you up. Um, seats intact. Uh, this car is a little unique because it was a pro car. Um, I had a structure underneath Tube, tube structure underneath for the seat mounting and that all appears to be intact the seat is broken but the seat back brace because it's out of date if I uh, it, it did its job Seat belts are at the end of their life, and they did good. Uh, looks like his wrist or something impacted the. <laughs> Whew, brother! <laughs> Give me this. Don't break it. Oh man! What? Uh. Looks like the torque tube bolts broke. The shifter bolts broke. One thing I will say, if you have a race car, build yourself a femur brace. Definitely would have prevented one of his ankles from getting beat up. Thankfully we didn't break any bones, you know, other than the ribs. Uh, he definitely came out of the seat. Uh, I'm gonna try and slow the video down from the V-Box. See if we can't, oh, what's up? Gas card, hell yeah. 
Oh, this is, you might, <laughs> you'll need that. <clears throat> the wing was epoxied on. Sent that baby home. still there but it is <laughs> <laughs> 